Welcome to another parent teacher video lesson from the earlygiftedmanual.com, a free website for homeschooled children three to seven years old and their parents that promotes and develops giftedness at an early age. I am Gary Blank, the creator of that site and your host and facilitator for this video and all of the videos in my educational program. As the video lessons are designed to work in conjunction with the program on my website, I ask you to, at some point, click on the URL link in the description box below, and this action will take you to the earlygiftedmanual.com. By doing that, you will be able to put this lesson and all of the video lessons here on my channel in the proper context of the total program that I am presenting to you and your child. Welcome to part two of lesson 13, counting up to 10 objects. And I'd like to show you perhaps a few more things you can do uh, with your child in, in, uh, in terms of uh, counting and counting skills. Um, this I call the mystery box. And as you can see, it's very exotic looking. I don't even, can't even remember where I got this, but it's satiny and uh, it's got some spangles on there and it has a lid that opens up. And you can actually, uh, if you can find one this fancy, good for you. If not, any, any old kind of box will do. But uh, the reason I call it the mystery box is because later on when uh, you start to do addition and subtraction, with your child, it will in fact become a very mysterious box. So there's my teaser for you. <laughs> so this is the mystery box, and here's another activity that you can do with your child to in, uh, reinforce her counting skills. So let's open the box up. I'm going to uh, I'm going to use rocks for our counters this time, and the whole idea of this exercise is. Uh, you want uh, your child to count silently to themselves as you are putting um, the rocks in the box. And uh, this is an important skill because uh, at some point when they're doing computations, they're going to be doing them silently in their head. So uh, this is another part, just another part of uh, learning how to count. So you, uh, the adult, the teacher would do this of course, quietly. And then you would ask your child, well, how many rocks did I put in the box? And hopefully he will be able to say seven. And once again, um, and he's, he'll be counting in his head. No more uh, out loud counting, well, at least not for this particular exercise. He has to count those silently in his head. A very important skill to learn as, as your child learns to master numbers. So that's the mystery box. Another thing you can do is uh, something I call sensor, sensory counting. This is optional, but uh, you might be interested in this. Uh, for this, I like to use uh, an old water bottle, stainless steel, and some pennies. And you can hide this under the table or behind some kind of screen, anywhere or where your child can't see it. All they can hear is this, the clanking of the penny going down to the bottom of whatever it is you're using. So it has to be something that makes a pretty good noise. So you would do this. And of course, out of sight of your child. And you would ask your child, how many pennies did I drop into the water bottle? And hopefully he would say four. So there's just another way you can approach counting. That's a kind of a sensory way. Um, let's see, how about some more skill, very practical skills. Counting and reading fingers. You can teach your child that if she 
needs to uh, count fingers, it works like this. One, two, three, four, five. And of course, on one hand, there are five fingers. And then, of course, you go over here. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And let's face it, counting on fingers is um, is one of the the stages your child will have to go through while they're learning to to master numbers and arithmetic. But it's not a stage you want them in for too long, and we'll talk about that a little more down the line. But anyway, that's counting fingers, and you can teach your child how to read. Uh, your fingers as you flash up fingers and they have to guess how many numbers and and that's also a good skill to learn like you might flash that and early on your child might have to walk up to you and touch count each one one two three but then after a while they get very used to you know the array of your fingers and they get better uh, you know obviously one and two are easy but you might flash this and they would know right off, uh, right off the bat that that's four fingers, wouldn't even have to count. And uh, so that's fun. And, and, like, and a little later, we will do activities where we're counting by tens with fingers. So it's good to get them used to, uh, your child used to reading what I call finger flashes. And another thing, you could teach uh, him or her to do is how to read a die. So you won't need the pair of dice, you only need one die. And of course it should be a big one so they can actually put their finger on and count the dots. And you could just have her roll it and have her count. And once again, it's, it's uh, touch counting. One, two, three, four, five. And what happens after a while is uh, your, your child will learn the arrays, so to speak. In other words, if she rolls this, she knows that because there are, in this square pattern, that that's four. If she rolled this, she would know that since it's in a diagonal, that would be three. Or if, you, or if she rolled this, uh, the square pattern with one in the middle, that's five. So what you're doing is you're kind of getting your child ready for game playing which is, a, of course, a big part of any child's education, games that they will play with a die or a pair of dice. So that's another good skill. And the last thing we want to do is I want to show you a little bit about ordinal numbers. And, of course, ordinal numbers are, uh, we all know what those are. Instead of one, two, three, we're talking about first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on. Um, the best way to do this is, is if you have a lot of kids at your disposal, you can line them up at a door and use the line going out the door as a way to do this exercise. If you don't have enough kids around, like, you know, at least three or four or more of them, uh, you will have to do a simulation. And you know I don't like simulations, but uh, sometimes you can't get around them. So here's... Here's my little model. Let's say this is the door. Let's, uh, and these are kids. And you know, this is actually, in a lot of ways, could be a, a good exercise to do with your child because you can show your child that things can stand for other things, which is a huge mathematical concept. Uh, you know, numbers stand for real thing, for example. So. This uh, stands for a door, meaning it represents a door. They like to hear stands. They like that word. Um, and here are three kids in line waiting to go out the door. So um, you can show her this is the first kid in line. This is the second kid in line. This is the third kid in line. And then take away all the explanations and just use your finger and say first, second, third, and have her do it and see if she can do it without making any mistakes. Um, of course, uh, another thing you'd like to, to do while you're doing this little exercise is that uh, you can uh, introduce the concept first, middle, 
and last, uh, and of course, uh, beginning of the line and end of the line, and you could do it like this. Of course, these are children. <laughs> this child is, is first in line. This child is in the middle of the line. This child is last in line. And you could say, this child is at the beginning of the line. This child is at the end of the line. And that's another uh, good addition to their vocabulary. And of course, as, uh, as she becomes more skilled, you add more kids to the line, you know, all the way up to, I'd say by this point, 10th. So, uh, but you can work your way up to that. And of course, order makes no difference. Let's say the kids all shift around. This position is still the first position. This is still the second position. This is still the third position. And that's important that they understand that. So we have first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. Um, as far as learning all of these, the names of these, well, um, some of them are what we call regular. It's the number with th at the end. And that would be like, for example, fourth is regular. Sixth is regular. Seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. And then, as you know, some of them are not regular, and they'll just have to memorize those. It's not one-th. <laughs> It's first, it's not tooth, it's second. It's not threeth, it's third. It's not fifth, it's fifth. And once again, those are strictly memorization kind of thing. So if you do it over and over again, um, eventually and maybe sooner than you think, your child will, will have those down. So that's uh, part two of lesson 13, counting up to 10 objects, and I'll see you in the next lesson.